Hey everybody, it's Vanessa, the Crafty Gemini. I post weekly videos right here on my YouTube channel, and in this video I want to tell you all about my brand new quilting ruler, the 5 inch slicer. Alright, so in this video we are going to be talking all about the 5 inch slicer and if you recall I recently launched the 10 inch slicer version. This guy was designed to be used with 10 inch by 10 inch squares of fabric. So now the little brother, as you can imagine, is designed to be used with the 5 inch by 5 inch squares. Real simple, a great scrap busting tool to have on hand and in this video I'm going to show you how to create this cute little triangular block called the peak block that you can make with the 5 inch slicer. There's no crazy angles that you have to measure for, there's no super precision required. The ruler is going to allow you to create the cuts that you need and you're going to see, I'm going to show you exactly how you can end up with perfect points that you're not going to be able to cut off when you're piecing your patchwork units together into rows or columns. So let's jump into the tutorial. Remember that if you need to grab one of these, you can always find a link in the description box below to get both my 5 inch or my 10 inch slicers. Enjoy the video. All right, so let's get started on showing you how to make a really simple quilt block using the five inch squares of fabric so that there's literally no fabric waste. You're gonna have a little bit to trim off, but it's not a big deal, and it's a great way to use up all these pre-cut squares that you use. Now, if you're not familiar with the five inch by five inch pre-cut squares, they come already cut for you based on the different collections that the fabric manufacturers have out there. There's a ton of different varieties, and you get a great variety in the pack itself. So instead of having to buy yardage of all these different colors of this print you now have it in one little cute stack that's affordable and a great way for you to crank out any quick little project all right so here I have some five inch squares and you're basically going to want to match up two or three different squares per the block that I'm going to show you and I'll show you both ver uh, variations so you can get a feel for it so let's get some high contrast here and this is what I tell all my students I don't really go as far as matching my fabrics I don't really go by what colors tend to match I go with high contrast so let's take these two squares for instance they're obviously not from the same collection, they're different prints, this looks like more textured. But the colors, I always want one to play as the light in the combination and the other to play as the dark. So this one is obviously going to be my light and this one is my dark. Now, if I did this with these two, this now is my light and this plays as the dark. Do you see how that works? So this same fabric print, although it works as a dark in this combination, if I have it with a darker fabric, it now plays as the light. So again, it doesn't really matter what the color of the print is, go for something that has high contrast and you'll still be able to get the design that you're after with what I'm gonna show you here to do. So to take my 5 inch slicer, you're going to use a 5 inch square of fabric. And I'm only going to cut one layer at a time here to show you. This is a basic way to use it. But if you feel comfortable stacking up one or two or three or four, sometimes I can do it with four. But I know not everybody feels comfortable doing that. But I'll show you here with two. Why not? Now what you're going to do is the idea we're going for is a triangle cut out from the center. So if you notice the shape of my template, if I turn it, let's see, this way. You're lining up a raw, uh, a, one of the raw edges of your squares with the flush straight edge here, here, and here. Do you see how that works? Okay, so I'm going to line it up there. And another way to do it is to just line up the template so that the two and a half inch edge is away from your body. And I'm just going to slice along the edge of the template right here. So here's what we end up with, okay? Now to get the triangle that I just mentioned, we are going to have to turn our template over to the other side. So again, it's the same. We cut it with the two and a half inch edge here. And now all you do really is flip it over and mirror image that cut on this side. Okay? So you see when I cut here, I'm now going to have cut out this triangle from the center. What I often do is I use this rotating mat so that I can cut it on the other side since I'm right-handed. And you can cut right here. So now you've cut your blocks into three different pieces with a triangle in the center. All right, and now that we have these, notice another thing is that when I'm cutting out these squares, I cut them all, like if you are gonna stack them up, stack them up with the pretty sides of the fabric all facing up so you have them cut in the same way. Here's this purple one, and here's this light aqua colored one. So now what I want you to do is swap out the center triangles. And now, you see that we are still using up our five inch by five inch squares, 
okay? We're using pretty much every bit of it. But now you have two really cool looking blocks that can be lined up in a variety of different ways to get some different designs. Now I'm gonna show you how to piece these together and I'll show you some other options and then I'll show you some different design variations that we can play with so that you can see that from this very simple block using my five inch slicer, you can make some really cool quilts. All right, so I'm gonna head over to my sewing machine and I'm going to stitch these guys together. Just line them up in the same orientation of how it looks like the finished block will be. And as you can see, I'm gonna take this one here and you're just matching them point to point. I know that oftentimes when we work with triangular shapes in patchwork, you're often told to overlap the corners by a quarter of an inch, but that's usually when you have 45 degree angles. Because this angle here on my five inch slicer is not a 45 degree angle, it's not a true bias and you're not gonna end up with that overlap. So instead, when you're lining them up, I want you to line them up point to point and you'll see that it measures exactly that. Now you're gonna take your quarter inch seam allowance and you're gonna stitch straight down here and press it to the side and attach the other piece as well. Now one cool thing about working with the five inch squares is that you don't really need pins. I mean, I don't need them. If you did need to use pins, you could um, just put like one or two pins. You don't need more than that really. But I find that because it's such a small piece, notice what happens. If I lay my fingers here, I can pretty much control the entire edge without the need for glue basting or pins, which for me, definitely saves me a lot of time. So I'm gonna line it up here. Okay, so that one is stitched there. Now I'm gonna grab the other piece and do the same thing to the opposite side here. All right, so here is our pieced little block, and now I'm gonna show you how to use the five inch slicer to trim up the edges and make everything nice and flush. So, because there's a 90 degree angle right here on my five inch slicer, you can use that angle to give you a straight edge. So I'm just gonna line it up here, trim away whatever excess I may have, and that way you don't have to be so precise with your piecing. If it's a little bit over, a little bit under, you still have plenty to go ahead, uh, plenty of wiggle room there to trim away. So this is the waste that we ended up with from one little block. So as you can see, you really are taking advantage of the fabric in your pre-cut squares. The way I see it, and this goes for my five inch slicer and my 10 inch slicer ruler, which is the big brother version of this little guy here, is that if you're paying a premium for the pre-cut fabric collections already, you might as well use as much of it as you can. Now if you notice, the block is more of a rectangle now versus a square because obviously you've taken in from the side dimensions two seam allowances, right? Now I am not so much worried about as, uh, as of the blocks being squared as I am of using the most of my fabric. So although it's a rectangle, it's not a big deal because as you continue to repeat this process with all your squares, okay, you're gonna end up with all identical blocks. And in quilting, that's really more important than the actual dimensions and the size is that you be consistent or that you trim them down so that they end up being consistent after you're done piecing your blocks, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and piece this one together and show you several more so you can see a few different block variations, but you can see how super duper simple it is to make this block using five inch squares and my five inch slicer. All right, so I went ahead and pieced together six of these blocks. So I used up just six of the different squares from my fabric stack here. Now you can see how little waste we had when we trimmed them down. If you've ever worked with pre-cuts before, you know that although they're cut to a certain size, they're not always super perfect and precise to those measurements. So there's always gonna be a little bit of trimming up that needs to be done. Now let's show you a few different variations of how you can line up these blocks to create your own different types of quilt designs. So here's one that if we just line them all up in the same orientation, we just get a bunch of these cute little peaks sticking up like that. And notice, I like to use a lot of solids and like blender types of fabrics, but you can make this uh, out of scrappy fabrics. Just pre-cut your, or I should say, cut your own fabric uh, scraps down to five inch squares, and then you can start whipping up all kinds of scrappy projects. It's a great way to crank out a cute looking quilt, and then also using up those fabric stacks without um, requiring really a pattern. All you need is my five inch slicer. So here's one variation of it. All the peaks are pointing up. Now, notice what happens if we swap them out with the corresponding or the matching print on the other side and turn it on its side. So now you end up with these diamonds that are made up of two different fabrics. You get a totally different look which I think would make a really bold and striking modern type of quilt, okay? Now, this is with the diamonds going point to point vertically. Imagine we turned them this way and now had these blocks going sideways. 
That's another variation on it. Now this is because we have the fabrics matching to its, its other little partner here. What if we swap these guys out? That's a totally different looking quilt, okay? It has more of a scrappy feel to it. Now you can swap them out, have some going in, some going out. Another design, okay? There's so much variation in this. If I did them like this with the matching partner, it would give it a more, you know, more cohesive look, but again, still getting that bold look, okay? So a lot of different variations that you can play around with. And then I wanted to show you what it looks like when you piece it all together to create a quilt top. So here's a little quilt top that I have started with this design. But notice, these are vintage prints, okay? And look what I did. I tried to match it up. It's really scrappy looking, but what I tried to do was go for a, uh, a color that matched on the other side of this diamond chunk here. So that this was red with red, kind of like in the pinks. This one had browns and browns, blues and blues. Some of them didn't match up exactly, but this had blue in it, so I matched it up with that one because I didn't have enough of the same thing. You know, I just used the one charm pack, and so this is pink with pink. So I didn't really care about the background pieces necessarily. I wanted more of the diamond shape to pop out. So that's another option as well. And you can see how cute that looks. They make it look like um, like ice cream cones, okay? So this is one little, this could be a table topper or a little play mat almost. It's not quite that big for a baby quilt, but again, I used all 42 squares in my uh, little stack that I had of these. So if you had four charm square packs, you can make a really nice size lap quilt with all these, okay? Now, one of the things that I do want to make note of, because I know a lot of beginning quilters are often scared to, to venture out from basic squares, rectangles, and strips for their patchwork. Once you start getting into triangles, I feel like a lot of my students get really scared about these points, wherever the triangle points match up and not having them match up correctly. Now, when you make my block with the five inch slicer, you can see how far away the point is from the edge of the block. So that is gonna tell you that there's really no chance that you can cut the tip of this triangle off because even if I were to trim it down by an additional quarter of an inch and then piece it in with a quarter inch seam allowance, I'm gonna be right at that tip. There's about a half of an inch chunk there left. So if we look closely at this quilt, you can see how far the points are. They're still floating. So you don't have to run the risk of it cutting into the tip and this is a great way for you to venture into the world of triangles and points without worrying that you're cutting them off completely, okay? You can see that there's still plenty of space on the ends beyond those tips, all right? So if you've never ventured out uh, to do some triangles or triangular piecing, I think this would be a great introduction to that because you don't really have to measure angles. Simply cut along the line of my five inch slicer and you're gonna get a perfect triangle every time and not run the risk of cutting the point of it off. All right, so that's it. This all this project requires are some five inch pre-cut squares of fabric and my five inch slicer ruler. When you get the five inch slicer, it looks like this. There's a hole already in it that you can use for hanging your rulers if you'd prefer to do that. And then there's also a link right on here where you can go and find all the video tutorials that I'm, I'm creating. And as I continue to create them, I add them to this page here. And that way you'll basically be getting a free video library of a variety of video tutorials and projects that you can make that require the five inch slicer. All right, so that's it for this video tutorial. I hope you enjoyed learning how to make the peak block using my brand new five inch slicer ruler. Remember that you can always click the link included for you in the description box below. That will take you over to my online shop so you can purchase one of these for yourself or as some gifts. This is the sample that I showed you in the video. I just wanted to hold it up for you to see it a little bit better. I'm definitely going to continue to add to this, but I wanted you to see kind of the effect that you get when you stand back and you look at all the units put together in this cool diamond shaped design. So, that's it for the video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, hit it with the thumbs up below, share it across the different social media sites, and don't forget to click the subscribe button so you won't miss out on any of my future videos. Thanks again for watching. Go grab your five inch slicer, and I'll see you in the next video.